Tom and Adam on Cultaholic Wrestling News. It's... Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. If you watch Graded, you'll get this. I don't think that's Adam Pachiti at all. I think that's Dexter Loomis in an Adam Pachiti mask. Let's do some wrestling headlines. <laughs> Please cut away, Owen. Owen, cut away. I feel, I feel, I feel tingly in places I shouldn't be tingly. Owen. Owen! <laughs> WWE sign major indie stars. The original plans for Sammy Guevara in Impact Wrestling have been revealed. And we have an update on WWE's social media policy. We'll get to that in a little bit. So we talked earlier on this week about WWE going on a little bit of a supermarket sweep of the wrestling world. More than a dozen new signings. A few names uh, that we're going to talk about have been mentioned in passing over the last couple of days. Some have come to light as soon as today. So who is on the books now, Adam, apparently, allegedly? So we already knew about Ty Valkyrie. We knew about Eli Drake, who, of course, popped up on TakeOver. LA Knight. LA, sorry, I apologize. Uh, Harlem Bravado also having been mentioned before. Uh, but there are a few new names that have been released uh, in the Wrestling Observer newsletter this morning. First of all, we start with a big one. We start with a big one. No disrespect to the others, but Davy Boy Smith Jr., the son Ooh. of the British Bulldog, um, has been rumoured. Uh, while he's not confirmed, signed yet, he's uh, he's believed to have a good shot at coming in and an interesting place for him. Uh, the the rumour is that he's going to be heading to NXT UK, which I think would be a tremendous get for them. As, as far as attracting um, UK viewers to watch the son of the British, Bulldog, you can't really get much better than that. ITV tried it with World of Sport. They brought him in as a surprise on the on the World of Sport tapings, um, and I think he'd be, a, a, yeah, I think he'd be a great get. He's done great work recently in New Japan, and he's really proven what he can do in wrestling in recent years. I would be intrigued to see how this affects WrestleMania week. He is down to be a part of the Hall of Fame induction for the British Bulldog, but also he's set to headline one of the nights of Josh Barnett's blood sport against John Moxley. One would believe that if David Boy Smith Jr. is coming in, and I've heard no? No? Not no? Happening. There's no way they'll let him do it. No. <laughs> I thought you'd say no way. No way it's definitely happening. Now, I mean, Game Changer Wrestling haven't, said anything yet so we're not putting words in anybody's mouth but that would certainly be my consideration if Dave Boy Smith is indeed on the books but he's not the only one from these here aisles that is joining the WWE according to rumours allegedly apparently who's that then Adam? Certainly not Millie McKenzie one of the already greatest uh, women's wrestlers in the UK she is unbelievably talented she's what 20, 20 years old? She's she's a, she's a young'un. She's a young'un, and she is so unbelievably talented. And the report stated uh, yesterday as well that if she is brought in, she's going to be immediately sort of put in the uh, NXT UK, sort of the top of the women's division as well, which is a sensible place for her because she's amazing. Yeah, she's so I, I, I thought it, I was surprised that we didn't have her sooner because she was part of that initial tournament for the women's for the NXT UK Women's Championship, and then nothing came of that. And and here we are now. She's back on the books. Or it also means that if Millie's in and Pete Dunn's there, Bruiser mates reforming. That would be nice that way round, Tom. Bruiser mates reforming at some point if if WWE ever ever gets uh, gets over the whole intergender wrestling thing. Bruiser mates coming back. Make that a thing. Uh, there's another name that is being talked about this morning, which I'm personally very excited to see happening. That's right. Adam Pacitti heading to NXT <laughs> UK. It's not AJ. Adam Pacitti. It's Adam Maxted. Uh, Adam Maxted, who you might be familiar with uh, from his work um, in, in the UK, uh, on the UK indie scene. He's, he's, a, he's a specimen, to be honest. Oh, he's an incredibly gotcha. handsome, ripped, beautiful, beautiful man. He also appeared, and I'm fed up, uh, sorry, I'm sure he's fed up of people mentioning this, but he was also on Love Island. You might remember him from there. Flex, remember Flex? I watched. No, I didn't. But Adam <laughs> Maxted's amazing. He's so good. And again, like he is desperate to move away from, from that. But a lot of people know him for that. And, and, it, and it draws eyes in that way. Exactly. Uh, as you say, a unit. I, you know what? I'm 
you, you guys were WC, did WCD, WCPW stuff, and you name dropped loads, as you should. I'm going to drop a name as well. I had the pleasure of working with Adam Maxson on multiple occasions. Uh, there is a video on YouTube somewhere of me throwing him into the ring because I'm massively powerful. Goodness um, gracious. But ge a genuine joy of a soul as well. Like a really lovely person to be around behind the scenes as well. And ridiculously talented. So if, he, if he's on the books, then that's an amazing get. For, for NXT UK. Agreed. Truly, truly is. NXT UK beefing up. They really like uh, like Rampage Brown on the on the books now for them. We haven't I, I know that I was a while ago, but we have I don't think I've properly addressed it with yourself in a while, but I love seeing Rampage on there oh, as well. He's amazing. He's amazing. Uh, like it, it is, it's really beefing up. They've got now like pretty much all of the biggest names in UK indie wrestling. It's it's gotta be said, they've got the vast majority of them at this point. As WWE continues to grow its own universe, AEW keeps kicking open that forbidden door. And Sammy Guevara has been a talking point over the last week or so. There was something that went down between uh, Sammy Guevara, Impact Wrestling and AEW. And today we have a little bit more of an idea of what we were supposed to see from Sammy as part of Impact. That's right. So Sammy Guevara um, pitched winning impacts x division title uh, he said that he wanted to win the title and then return to aew um, having just won it in impact and then he would never lose it and then it would go up in a tournament but impact wrestling did not like that idea chris jericho is said to be the one that put that angle together um alongside don Callis, and apparently it made jericho look bad because impact um because they came up with the idea and then apparently Guevara didn't want to do it. Uh, apparently the, the plans changed. Guevara wasn't especially keen on doing it. And then the report states that he flew out to Nashville. He was going to do the stuff and then they just sent him home straight away. That's just ridiculous. I, I, what a weird thing to do, to put into place. Like if you're trying to build this equal, equal footing relationship between... Uh, AEW and Impact Wrestling. The first, the, one of the first things that you pitch is, oh, one of our guys wins your belt and never brings it back. <laughs> I can understand why they didn't like that. I can, I can understand. Apparently, everything now has been smoothed over, uh, but there were people in Impact who said the company not happy about it at first, and it did impact uh, relationship at the beginning. Uh, and it's said here that as well, Guevara not expected to be going to Impact now as part of this stuff. Don't expect to see Sammy Guevara turn up um, on Impact TV. And that's a shame because you know what? I love on paper the idea of Guevara winning the X Division Me title. Too. Uh, but then lose it to a guy. For goodness sake. That's yeah. how this works. Lose it back to an impact guy and then both like both companies are elevated as a result. I can understand why they, they're not lucky. Absolutely. Lacking. Absolutely. More forbidden door news. Something that uh, Ross Tweddle will be delighted to hear. Uh, we've heard from Maki Ito following her appearance for AEW in the Women's Eliminator Tournament. What's happening, Adam? Don't know, Tom. I can't find my notes. Oh, don't you worry. I've got them in front of me. Right, I've got no, them in uh, front of me right here. If you want. Fightful, speaking to Maki Ito after her AEW appearance, uh, and she said that Tokyo um, officials let her know that she would be a part of the tournament and then she immediately contacted her parents to tell them the news. She said that it happened so quickly that it didn't feel real, and she's open to working with All Elite Wrestling in the future. Um, specifically, she said that she would be interested in joining the Dark Order for a fee. For a fee. I'd love to see that. Yes, please. <laughs> I think Maki Ito should lead the Dark Order. I'm just saying. <laughs> just just saying. I'm so excited to see more of Maki Ito on, Agreed. on television and AEW. Just just a talent. Just just an absolute force of nature. Uh, also, uh, Fightful say we spoke about the importance with Maki Ito of social media to her growth. She mentioned that her experience in Link U helped prepare her for the performance aspects of pro wrestling. And she is somebody that has grown through social media. I think had it not been stuff like Twitter or Facebook, uh, a, a performance but like Maki Ito might not have been as 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 aware to us as Agreed. as it would be otherwise. And her, the engagement rate of all of her stuff has shot up tremendously as well. People are more invested in her than ever. Speaking of social media, Tom, mm -hmm. <laughs> WWE's new social media policy has caused a little bit of a stir this week. So it was first reported by Wrestling Inc. Um, that WWE had banned talent tweeting or promoting any business or charity through Twitter or Instagram. Um, but WWE have since said that limiting charitable initiatives isn't a part of this, and they specifically noted that things like Sammy for Syria, um, which is Zayn obviously um, raising money for a mobile 
medical clinic in Syria is still allowed. So it, this was something we talked about earlier in the week, how they were really pulling back on on any third party mentions and such. And, and WWE were quick to sort of clarify their position on this, saying this is about a formal relationship where talent is monetizing. WWE IP, uh, the WWE claims all social media accounts of talent are theirs, uh, say that... Um, it's not dissimilar to what we have said over the past few months regarding that. So a lot of people took this as, oh, that's it. You can't have brands anymore. And that's not really the case. I think it's more if it's if it's blatant sort of publicizing, then there's an issue with that. It's not if, you, a case if of... you're being paid. That's what it is, isn't it? You should you, the, the, a, a big part of it, at least, is if a company is paying you, then that's an issue. To me, the, the, the big problem here is WWE saying that their social media accounts, even if they're not using their WWE trademark names keep it going keep it going um if they're just using their Very real names then that. then wwe is saying that's part of their intellectual property which is absolute nonsense isn't it? Sure. <laughs> that, that's just it is just ridiculous if somebody um tweets or does an instagram post and they use their real name that's that's like saying that we own your face and everything <laughs> they they own they, sure they've trademarked the names the character likenesses that makes sense but if it's just a wrestler just being themselves, I, I, I think there's a big issue. And it, of course, once again, brings up the, the issue of um, independent contractors. At what point are they independent contractors? When WWE have such a stranglehold on everything they're doing, um, even if it doesn't relate to their likeness on TV, I think it's awful. The social media cosmic ballet continues with WWE. It is Elimination Chamber this weekend. Predictions on the channel right now. We will have live reactions. Who's live reacting on Sunday, Adam? Oh, yeah. Ah, <laughs> it's yourself. It's myself. You lucky devil, you. We'll have graded what happened at and uh, WTF moments on Monday as well. Uh, there, uh, That's my last news video for two weeks. I'm going now oh, for yeah. a bit. I'm back. I'm doing Elimination Chamber grained, uh, grained, grained, apparently. And then I'm off for two weeks. So don't miss me too much, all right? We won't. See ya. Bye. Anyway. All the best. Love you. Bye.